Do you have dirty jobs to do around your workshop? Bird droppings, squished bugs, mold, dirty flaky stains and rotten boards. Yuck! This is a job for the woodpeckers. The woodpeckers are a family of workers who take control of dirty jobs on wood surfaces. Nothing can stand up to them. They get rid of mold, rotten stuff and crappy paint by reducing them to dust. They do a darn good job. They don't use dangerous chemicals, which is best for your puppy, your family, and the whole planet. Tough on yuck, soft on wood. The woodpeckers. Here's how it works. First, let me introduce you to our superheroes. They begin by removing the rotten wood. They replace it, sand everywhere. Even Chanel is put to the task. Wow, what a nice job! Finally, they apply preservative everywhere. It looks brand new, just like in a dream. But in real life, it's more like a nightmare. That's when we decide to remove a few pieces of the pool deck. The more we do, the more we find rotten wood. It's awful. As you can see, it's a pretty complicated deck because the seats are built into it. But now, it looks awful. We have to give it a makeover. And I thought it only needed a little sending. I was wrong, big time. And I volunteered to make what I thought was a three minute video. Oh my God. We began by removing the seats and backrests. What do we find? Rotten wood. Because we have two decks connected through a kind of bridge, Alain works on one deck and Francois on the other. I just do what I can. Oh no, more rotten wood. I hope we're done with that. Alain has to cut some bolts to remove one piece of wood. Sometimes you have to do it the hard way. I begin to sand. Alain begins to make the new parts to replace what was rotten. He makes the parts that go under the seats. You can see it here beside the one being cut. They have several complicated angles. Then all of us began to sand. Since Alain Sander is not very good, he decided to do something else. We decide to recycle as many boards as possible. To recuperate them, Alain passes them through the thickness planer. He has a lot of them to go through. He also passes them through the jointer. This makes a lot of dust. Look at that pile! Alain cuts other bolts to remove other pieces of rotten wood that he just found. Oh my god, more rotten wood! All this side is rotten. We have to remove all the floor. What a nice pile of boards. The front beam is also rotten. We have to remove it. I remove the joist iners to loosen it. Then we bang it with the sledgehammer. We install a new beam. And Alain refastens the floor. I keep on sending all sorts of pieces of wood. Alain made a little spacer that he uses between the floor boards. He also made a wedge to tighten the boards together. Quite efficient. The ones near the edge of the pool are installed in the other direction to follow the curve of the pool. 
They're installed by sections that Alain cuts in straight line. In all, there are three sections. The boards on the edges need special cuts to fit well with the edge of the deck and the shape of the pool. On that day, there were so many insects that we couldn't breed with our mouths open. We had trouble speaking to each other without swallowing all those bugs. To hide the edges of the boards, Alain cuts three pieces of nosing. He applies some caulking on them before he screws them in place. Next, he cuts the excess wood on both sides. Now it's time for the fascia. He puts some caulking on the wood and we install the first board. They are screwed from underneath to hide the screws. As you can see, it's not flush. So Alain uses his jack to raise it. It's very efficient. Alain has to work alone because I'm going to rest. Well, I mean, I'm going to work. He begins to work on the back rest of the benches with the help of the rotten ones. Once again, there are some complex cuts to make. Oh. Then we begin to install them. I keep them leveled while Alain drills the holes. Then he inserts the carriage bolt and screws the nut. The corners are different. The next day is another rainy day, so we decide to recycle the boards by surfacing them through the thickness planer. There are a whole bunch of them. It takes us all morning. Then it's Alain's turn to get some rest. I mean, go to work? Meanwhile, I do a lot of sanding. Two old days. The next day, Alain makes other supports that I send. On a hot and sunny day, Alain installs the last supports. We start to work on the corners. He installs the new parts he made. Next, we install the rails. Alain made new spacers to keep the same space between them. We use clamps to maintain them and he screws them. Next comes the benches supports. This is more complicated because there are some pieces with angles that are screwed from underneath the deck. Again, he drills the hole inserts a carriage bolt and screws the nut. He also has to cut the bolt because it's too long. There are five supports exactly like this one. Those in the corner are slightly different because there's only one piece of wood in the center. He begins by drilling a hole in the horizontal piece and screw it. He does the same thing for the angled piece. There are two corners like that. Next, he begins to make the boards for the benches. We have decided to use new boards for that because we don't want to have splinters in our butts. He cuts the angles, applies some caulking to protect the wood in the corners, puts them in place carefully and screws them. Three boards are needed for the benches. Yes, sir, it means a lot of screws. On top of that, the screws are also recycled. When we built it 25 years ago, we used stainless steel screws. People used to laugh at us saying we spent more money on the screws than the price of the wood. But today it serves us well. Who's laughing now? And guess what I'm doing? You're right, I'm still sanding. Hey, wait a minute, Mr. Woodpecker. What are you doing there? Resting again? There's a lot more work to be done. It's not over. 
There's another deck to work on, and this one is much bigger and it requires a lot of work. Alain begins to install the boards on top of the bench's supports. He applies some caulking in the corners, places them correctly, and screws them. Another small break before trimming the benches to the right length. Four cuts, and it's done. There's still a piece of rail to install on each side of the benches. They also require some precise cuts to fit well. Then he trims the rails to length. And finishes to cut the benches. During this time, I'm still sanding. Alain removes one small board to make sure the wood is okay. Nothing here. Nothing there. No sign of rotten wood. Yes! But this one has to be replaced. So Alain unscrews it and cuts part of it to remove the bad part. He replaces it with a recycled one. It barely shows. On the next day, it's raining. So we decide to work on the bridge. Alain has dismantled it and of course, most of it is rotten. He uses new 4x4s and old ones and rebuilds it. Then we sand it. He makes a pilot hole and attaches it with long screws. Next, he reinforces the corners with mounting brackets. Finally, he drills some holes for the hooks that maintain it between the two decks. There are two at both ends. And it's still raining, so Alain applies the preservative on the wood. It's the same one he uses on his workshop. The edges of the boards are a little square because they have been through the thickness planer, so he makes a round over with a hand plane. He does the corner with his miniature hand plane and finishes it with a trimming plane. Next, he removes the excess of caulking on the floor before he sands it. We don't want to get some splinters when we're bare feet. He also sends the benches a little. And now, time to apply the preservative everywhere. And I mean everywhere. It really changes the color of the wood. Wow, it's beautiful. Then, just for fun, I use a screw to remove the dirt and stain residue in the heads of the screws. About a thousand of them. The goal is to help Alain screw the screws deeper into the wood so we can sand the deck without destroying the sanding paper or the screws themselves. Next, Alain begins to sand the floor. It's a huge job. It really was in bad shape. He begins with a grid of 60 but switches to 40 to speed up the process. It took him 9 hours. I sand between the cracks because we still see the dark gray lines between the boards. It looks dirty. I use a linear sander to which I stick round of sandpaper that I fold in a loose triangle. It does a good job. I also use a detail sander to sand the corners and hard places to reach all around the deck. Then Alain begins to install the bench's supports. As Alain would say, it's the same old, same old. He does the hole in the support, inserts the carriage bolt, and screws the nut from under the deck. There are more supports because this patio is bigger than the other one. He installs the one in the corner. And all the others. Next, he installs the horizontal rails on every side without forgetting to apply some caulking to protect the angles in the corner. He always uses his spacer to make sure everything is straight and equal. And he finishes with the top of the rail. Next, he removes the steps and look what he found. More rotten wood. We have to make new stairs. It's a real nightmare. He takes it all apart. It's now raining, so we have to work inside the shop. I apply the preservative on all the pieces of wood that are inside. 
Alain begins to cut wood. Then we are three people working. Two on the sanders and one building the new stairs. Alain has to build it in several parts because the 2x6 is not wide enough. He places one of them on the string board and adds the other one in front of it. Then he marks the wood to be removed and cuts a test triangle. He makes sure it's good and uses it to cut all the other triangles he needs. Then he can start to glue them to the first 2 by 6 As we are missing some wood, I go to the store and buy more. Sand it and apply the preservative on it. Then I apply a second layer of preservative on the pool deck. Next, I surface all the steps through the thickness planer. Wow, I like this machine. You can do real damage with that. I send them while Alain cuts and glues small triangles to the stringers. When the glue is dry, I send them and apply the preservative. Next, Alain installs the benches all around the deck. and cuts the excess at both ends. When the stringers are dry, he makes the cuts to fit them to the deck. Meanwhile, I send the floor of the deck with a sandpaper of 60 grit. Hey Chanel, I hope you're not too tired. Can you give me a paw? Oh boy, she's exhausted. Alain installs the stringers and solidifies them. Jesse, who came to visit, helps him to keep it leveled while he screws it solidly. Then he installs the steps. Just like for the other deck, he runs over the top with his block plane and finishes the part close to the wall with his miniature block plane. Next, he starts to install the supports for the rails. They are just like the others. There are two at the bottom and two at the top of the stairs. The steps at the bottom have to be cut to accommodate the supports. He cuts them on the bandsaw. and installs them, always using his pacers. Meanwhile, I started to apply the preservative on the exterior of the deck. Then Alain starts to install the rails. They are just like the other ones on the sides of the deck. There are three of them, plus the top. As you can see, I had already applied the preservative on them. Finally, new stairs. Next, he installs the small pieces of wood that are part of the drawbridge. Yes, I really said drawbridge. Then, Alain comes to help me to apply the preservative. It's twice as fast. Before I leave for work, I help him to install the base for the bridge. Then, he applies the preservative on the floor. It's easier and faster when you apply it on long straight boards. When he's done, he starts to work on the drawbridge. He screws the metal plates to the bench's supports. There are two on each side, on each side of the bridge. Then he screws the boards to the plates where the holes were drilled. Each board is placed at the distance he had calculated when he had built it 25 years ago. The camera that's filming this shot is presently located on the pool deck to give the best angle possible. As it's a very windy day, the wind sweeps the camera in the air and it flies right into the pool. Here is its last image. As we see in the trade, the show must go on. So Alain gets his active on camera, puts it in the same spot and keeps on working. I know you're going to say, there are some boards missing, and you're right. So he installs the one at the end of the bridge and all the others at an equal distance directly on the structure of the bridge. Here, you can see part of the result. It's very clever. When the side is up, it gives the impression that the rail continues. And when it's down, it completes the floor of the bridge.
when suddenly the wind sends the camera flying in the air and into the pool again. But luckily for us, this one is water resistant. The other was not and it's not working anymore. So we have to buy a new one. He gets the camera out of the pool with the net and keeps on filming with it. You can see it here, the drawbridge is finished. There are only the two sidings to install. I just want to draw your attention to the fact that the following pictures are taken from the brand new camera. And now there's only some hardware to install. Alain screws the locks for the panel of the drawbridge to lock them open. We don't want them to fall on our toes. Two on each side, on both decks. And voila, we can lock them in place. Then he screws some eye screws for the security ropes. He has four to screw. Next, the four small eye screws. They are screwed directly under the first board of the panel. He has four to install. He passes a small rope in them and makes several nuts at the end to prevent them from passing through the eye of the screw, even when applying a good force by pulling on them. They will serve to pull up or release the panel of the drawbridge. He does the same thing with some big spring hooks for the security ropes on each side of the bridge. The last thing to do is to install the ladder for the pool. For that, he has to make two holes in the deck. He puts the ladder in place and I mark the location of its outline directly on the deck. He uses his old saw to pierce them. Because we have passed the boards through the thickness planer, the boards are thinner, so we decide to strengthen the floor surrounding the ladder. Alain takes a couple of blocks, drills a hole, applies a good quantity of glue and screws them from underneath the deck. He has to file them a little to ensure the ladder can pass through them. Then he can install it. It's a little bit tight, but we want it that way because the hole will get bigger with the pulling and pushing factor happening with wear. It'll be perfect. Here's what our decks look like when they are completely done. They don't look like they did before we started to work on them. They seem brand new. Luckily for us, we bought good quality materials when we built them 25 years ago. It allowed us to recuperate most of it and lower the costs. Because you know that cedar doesn't come cheap. I don't even want to think about the cost of building the same decks today. Add to that the unexpected fact that we had to buy a brand new camera. That wasn't part of the original plan, but we're really proud of our new decks. They're even more beautiful than I had expected. Except that I anticipated one week of work and not four intensive weeks of labor. The only flaw that I find is that it reflects the sun a little too much, but I guess it won't last. The sun and daily use will probably take care of that glass pretty soon. Next, we move the furniture back in place and we can return to our normal activities on our brand new deck, like getting a suntan, reading a good book, eating outside in good company, relaxing while listening to the birds, and my favorite of all, cooking meals on the barbecue and eating outside. And don't forget to come back to see us on The Woodpecker!